Hi, my name is Carl Franz Williams. I'm a professional bartender, and I'm here today to show you how to make some of my favorite whiskey cocktails. Take these as guidelines. They're very good guidelines, but you have to find what tastes best to you. First up, bourbon. For it to be called a bourbon, at least 51% of the grains used in making that whiskey need to be corn. It has to be made somewhere in the US. It has to be aged in new charred oak barrels. There would be no better place to start than with the old fashioned. The old fashioned, you always wanna start with the ingredients that are the least expensive first. That way, if you make a mistake, you're not wasting your great bourbon. So this is a one-to-one -one simple syrup, which basically means equal parts sugar and water. We're gonna do three dashes of Angostura bitters. You'll see a lot of recipes call for two ounces of bourbon in an old fashioned. I'm gonna go with two and a half. Those are all of our ingredients in there. Now, the fourth ingredient, which is ice and water. We're using a combination of cracked ice and whole ice, and that way you get the cooling with just the right amount of dilution. The key to stirring, you are turning your spoon like this while you're turning it like that. So both of those motions are happening at the same time. And that gives you that sort of really clean, there's no ice flying everywhere. I'm checking the temperature of this as I'm doing this. I don't wanna over dilute it. It's a big ice cube, it's gonna continue to pull the drink, but it's not gonna over dilute the drink. This is called a julep strainer. The main thing to remember is that the garnish is actually an ingredient. Old fashions need citrus. I'm really getting the outer layer of the skin and that's where all the citrus oil and aromatics are. And so what happens when your oil hits fire, it burns. And so you're just gonna warm it up a little bit and then you can see the glass is nice and frosty, it's cool, but that big cube is giving me a nice slow dilution on this, so the drink is never getting watered down. This is a great after dinner drink. The mint julep, one of the most storied cocktails connected to so much great lore in American history. You find some of the first references to black bartenders who had really mastered this art of creating the perfect mint julep. Just this first step we're gonna do in our mixing glass. Three to five mint leaves and then super fine sugar. I'm essentially making a mint simple syrup. And then out comes our muddler. So you're just extracting the mint flavor from these leaves. Add this to there. You see me making this mint julep in, a classic julep cup. Two and a half ounces of bourbon in here, just like the old fashioned. So here we're gonna add our crushed ice. And then we're gonna give this a nice stir. And that is the cooling process. And stirring gives you a chance to look around the room, talk to people if you want, and say hi to your guests. Look at that, I can write my name in that. <laughs> it's nice and frosty on the outside of that. Add some more ice, and we're gonna stir this some more. We're ready for presentation, and we wanna just really add a nice big bouquet of mint to this. I'm sort of tapping against my hand to express a lot of the oils and flavor here. So make a little mound here. Finished with a little bit of funky Jamaican rum, that coldness, that dilution really makes this, that's really good. The whiskey sour. If it's a sour, it contains a citrus sour with sugar and spirit, and then traditionally with egg white as well. For this drink, we need about three quarter of an ounce of lemon juice. This is simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce, one and a half ounces of our bourbon. I talked about adding egg white, and you can crack in pour it in there. I find that that oftentimes will lead to a big mess. What I'm about to show you, it takes a little bit of practice to get this right. And the yolk stays right in there. I'm gonna add ice in here and then we're gonna shake. Normally I'd probably stop right there. Because I have egg white, I really wanna get that egg white emulsified. I wanna get a nice creamy texture to the drink. I've got ice in this glass now so that this can really start to chill. We're gonna do, it's called a throw. You wanna like, really practice this so that you don't make a big mess. This secondary strainer, and what I'm doing here is I'm getting out any ice chips or whatever, and I'm giving it that like perfect smooth texture that you see here. We'll go with classic presentation today. You see the egg white, the froth, that sort of foaminess is right on the top. It sort of becomes the first thing in your mouth and then the drink comes behind it. So it all works together. New York sour is a whiskey sour that has a float of red wine on top. Just like with the regular whiskey sour, we're going with three quarter ounce of lemon juice, same amount of our simple syrup, and bourbon, two ounces. 
We'll add our Hawthorne strainer and we're gonna take our red wine, pour along the back of a spoon and then it sort of layers it nicely on top. And you want the wine to be relatively dry because this is definitely not the right drink to add a, a sweet red wine on top of, you know, a drink that's a, a sour, right? The stone sour. This is a, a method that Tom Bullock pioneered back in the early 1900s. He was the first African-American to publish a cocktail book, and the book was called The Ideal Bartender. What sort of sets it apart is the addition of orange juice. We'll start with our lemon juice, and I'm actually splitting this and doing a half ounce of lemon and a half ounce of orange. We're actually splitting both of our sour and our sweet here. We're gonna do half simple, and then half of apricot brandy. Add our bourbon and it's two ounces. Add some ice to our glass. I'm using a Collins glass here. Thank you, Tom, for this drink here. Oh, wow. The paper plane. This cocktail is a modern classic. We're gonna start with our lemon juice here. Everything's equal parts. We'll add three quarters of our Aperol. Aperol is a bitter sweet aperitif made with orange, sort of orange side and the bitter side. And Amaro Nonino. Amari are a class of Italian aperitifs, preparing your stomach for the meal, uh, the digestifs being higher proof, helping you digest afterwards. Last but definitely not least, our bourbon. We're first starting with our Hawthorne strainer and then going through our fine mesh strainer. I, I love the color. I, mean, I think paper planes are just very, they're very pretty drinks. The Gold Rush. It's basically a whiskey sour. The big difference here is that we're changing our sugar out. Instead of simple syrup, we're going to be using honey syrup. Honey's a little bit less sweet than sugar, and so it makes for a very sort of thick syrup, which I think gives this cocktail a nice body. Generally, you see recipes calling for about three-quarter lemon, three-quarter honey syrup. It's very important that you use a one-to-one -one honey syrup, equal parts honey and water, and two ounces of bourbon. We're gonna start this glass cooling down a little bit, so we're gonna add our big cube in there. So now we're gonna shake. The beautiful thing about the Gold Rush is you can see how it gets this nice little layer on the top there, and that's the honey that's giving it that body. The Brown Derby. We're gonna start with our grapefruit, and you're going for one ounce of grapefruit juice. We're gonna go to our honey syrup here. We're gonna go for our half ounce. Grapefruit, while tart, tangy, does have some sweetness to it. And so you really have to go sort of an even balance of sugar and sour. Two ounces of bourbon. I usually keep my martini coupe glasses, this style of glass stored in the refrigerator. But if you don't happen to have them in the refrigerator, add a little ice and water, swirl it a little bit. We're going to double strain this, make sure that we really get out any ice cubes or cracked ice or anything in there and we end up with a nice really smooth finish on this drink and then our garnish the fact that the glass has been chilled means everything just comes out that much more um, cold and therefore refreshing and easy to drink well, the boulevardier we'll start with our sweet vermouth a vermouth is a fortified wine and we're going to do one ounce and we'll do one ounce of campari campari is a aperitif made from bitter orange it is bitter, but has a hint of maybe sweetness to it. And then last but not least, I'm gonna do one and a half ounces of my bourbon. Don't call me a rebel or anything like that. I'm just having fun. You'll see people sometimes using rye. Some of these recipes that we're making right now work really well, regardless of what the spirit is. And we'll finish this Boulevardier with an orange twist. I highly recommend take this very simple structure and play with it, make it your own. The New York Flip falls into a category of drinks known as flips. You're using the egg, oftentimes the whole egg, and you sort of leave the citrus out. But we are really foraying into an area that could be considered a dessert drink. We're gonna use about three quarter of an ounce of heavy cream. We're gonna do about a half ounce of simple syrup, and then three quarter ounce of tawny port. We're gonna take that egg yolk and we're gonna throw that in. I'm gonna finish this off with one and a half ounces of bourbon. We're gonna add ice, we're gonna do a hard shake, remove the ice. We're gonna use a technique called a dry shake, but I like to do my dry shake as a secondary step. So now we're gonna throw, just know that practice makes perfect. You wanna be able to lengthen that just like that. All I'm doing is allowing for a great deal of aeration. To finish this drink, 
we're just gonna grate a little bit of nutmeg along the top here. A lot of the baking spice flavors that are there, you'll find in your whiskey. And so it all sort of marries together and gives this nice, creamy, delicious goodness. Next up, rye. In a rye, it is 51% rye. And then other grains aged in new and charred oak barrels. The tasting note that you'll get from ryes tend to be a lot spicier. These two ryes really have that nice peppery note that sets a rye apart and is gonna be perfect for the cocktails that we're gonna be doing. Manhattan, this cocktail dates back to the 1880s. It is a foundational cocktail and you'll see that this sort of combination of spirit with fortified wine being applied across a lot of different cocktails. One ounce of Carpano Antica Vermouth. This is the oldest vermouth. Two dashes of our Angostura bitters, and then two ounces of rye. You wanna go with higher proof rye here, 50% or better. You are stirring until it feels nice and cold in your hand. I'm gonna be using a brandy cherry. You get the spicy notes, but they're layered and there's a balance that comes through the use of the vermouth. You notice how, how full this glass is? You often find that Manhattans are served in smaller martini or coupe glasses. Just be careful. Don't be rude. Don't stick your face down like that. The Brooklyn cocktail, like the Manhattan, we will start with an ounce of our dry vermouth. To create the balance in the cocktail, it uses a couple bitter but yet sweet liqueurs. In this case, maraschino. The liqueur made from maraschino cherries, doing about a quarter ounce. And a liqueur called Amer Pecan, which is actually not available here in the US today. So we're gonna use a substitute for it. The Martuni and Rossi bitter liqueur, sort of the orange flavor that the Amer Pecan had, quarter ounce. If you don't happen to have this bitter, you can use a few dashes of Angostura bitters. It doesn't quite create the same volume. Last but not least, our pin hook rye and we're going to do two ounces it is equally as amazing if not more so than its manhattan counterpart in fact even more nuanced and beautiful but i could be biased i am from brooklyn after all the sazerac this cocktail is actually a personal favorite of mine this drink the sazerac is also from new orleans made with rye or a split base of rye and cognac we are going to start by chilling our glass because this drink is actually served up the recipe calls for about a quarter ounce of simple i like a little bit between a quarter and a half so not quite a half not quite a little bit more than a quarter Three dashes of Peixote's bitters. Peixote's bitter is a aromatic bitter, very similar to Angostura bitters, specific to the cocktail revolution, the cocktail scene in New Orleans. One dash of Angostura. We're gonna do two full ounces of rye. The other unique ingredient is the use of absinthe. There's a lot of mystique when it comes to absinthe. You hear of stories of people going crazy and doing wild things. It's unlikely that absinthe was the cause of that. Add it directly to the glass, give the glass a twirl and yell Sazerac, and then we'll pour that out. And that's ready to go. This sort of makes for more theater in the production of your drink. Our glass is chill. It's been rinsed with absinthe. When serving with a julep strainer, you wanna make sure that you get it in there. So. There's no chance of that ice getting by. A lot of debate when making a Sazerac about whether or not you drop the lemon peel into the glass or if you just serve it on the rim. I actually prefer to serve mine in the glass. The Sazerac is everything. The improved whiskey cocktail. This is an old fashioned with a few new fangled ingredients being added to it. We're gonna start with a sugar cube. We'll add about a bar spoon of water and a bar spoon of maraschino. One dash of Peixotes and one dash of Angostura. We're going to add a dash of absinthe. A dash is less than a bar spoon. So what comes next? The rye. And we're doing two ounces. We'll add our big cube to our glass. And now we'll cool this down. There is not an official declaration on your garnish for this. Personally, I prefer lemon. The blend of the maraschino and absinthe and everything in there. It's sort of leaning towards Sazerac, which of course I'm gonna love. I recommend it. The Monte Carlo. In this cocktail, we're using Benedictine herbal liqueur. We don't exactly know all of the ingredients. The recipe is secret. It's got some sweetness. It's got all these sort of herbal notes. And then it's also foolproof. Half ounce, two ounces of rye, and one dash of Angostura bitters. First, we'll get that going. 
I have a personal preference for an orange twist on here. The spiciness, the notes that are inherent in that rye really come through. Delicious drink. The Vu Carré. The pronunciation is French, and I'm sure that there's a French person who's cracking up at my pronunciation of Vu Carré. What's really cool about this cocktail is where it sits in the American drink history. The popular brandies and cognacs that sort of ruled drinking here, especially in Louisiana and New Orleans, and beginning to sort of fall out of vogue and American whiskey taking over. We will start with French sweet vermouth. For each of these, we're gonna do three quarter ounce. This is our cognac. Jump right into our rye here, three quarters of an ounce as well. Benedictine, we'll add a bar spoon fill. It's a couple dashes of Angostura bitters. And we're gonna add a couple dashes of Peychaud's. There is some flexibility here. You don't necessarily have to do the Angostura. You can kind of just do the Peychaud's. I like a little bit of both. We're going to add our big cube to our glass. You may also see this technique called a phantom peel, but the idea is really you're expressing, you're not leaving that peel in the glass. So you only know it was there due to the aromatics, the smell, what you're encountering when you taste it. We will add our cherry. And there you have it. Cognac, rye, Benedictine. Where could you go wrong? You've got so many strong flavors, yet they all sit in harmony in the glass. The Algonquin. So this drink is a combination of rye whiskey, dry vermouth, and pineapple juice. Now the pineapple juice is going to create a nice, frothy, foamy layer on top of this drink, which I think really makes the drink special. Starting with our pineapple juice, three quarter ounce, three quarter ounce of dry vermouth, one and a half ounces of rye, we will double strain this. The traditional garnish for an Algonquin is a brandy cherry and a pineapple slice. I like a little bit of bitters in here and that kind of sits nicely on that pineapple base. Next up, scotch, as the name implies, comes from Scotland. Scotch is one of the most highly regulated and oftentimes one of the most consistent and reliable spirits that you can try. There are five scotch producing regions in Scotland. Different scotches will have different peat levels. Peat is a vegetal matter that has sort of begun to decay before ultimately farming coal. Most scotches you'll taste are blended scotches. Single malt means all of the various whiskeys that are being blended in that scotch are coming from the same distillery. The penicillin. This is another modern classic that hails from milk and honey. I'm using about a half ounce of ginger syrup, and then we're gonna do half ounce of honey syrup. We'll add our citrus, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. We start with a nice blended scotch, then we add just enough of a heavily peated Islay scotch to give some of that salinity and peat to this drink. Peated scotches tend to be very overpowering. We are smoking this malted barley or this germinated barley over this peat. And so it gives it a really unique flavor. So a lot like the Gold Rush, this is also being served over a large cube. I like it double strained. And then our garnish for this one is actually super cool. It's a piece of candy ginger. I actually like this while I'm drinking the cocktail. Think about it as the salt on a margarita rim, right? I love that color too. Now that is absolutely delicious. The ginger, the honey, everything really resonates there. And got my little bit of ginger candy. Blood and sand. Such a provocative name, uh, but this is a great cocktail. Everything is pretty close in proportion, and that's how we're striking balance in this cocktail. We're gonna be working with orange as our citrus. One ounce of orange juice, three quarters of cherry herring. It's lower ABV, really sweet, and the cherry flavor is really punched through. Three quarters of our sweet vermouth, an ounce of our scotch. We will double strain this. Look at that color. That's a pretty little thing right there. So easy to drink, so flavorful. They're a marriage made in heaven. Or maybe that's the scotch talking to me. The Rob Roy. This cocktail is a Manhattan made from scotch instead of rye. This is an idea how just a substitution of whatever the spirit is 
can generate a very different flavor and a unique drink in and of itself. We're starting with our one here and one ounce of sweet vermouth. I like my Manhattans with Antica. It kind of makes me feel like that Manhattan is just such an older cocktail. Once I get outside of that, even if I'm doing a close cousin like the Rob Roy, I'm moving to some of my other uh, favorite vermouths. Two dashes of Angostura bitters, and then finishing off with our scotch, two ounces of a blended scotch. You get that sort of classic scotch flavor without the smoke and the peat. That works best for this cocktail. This is a great time to check and see how everybody's doing out there. I hope to see everyone who's watching this video in one of my bars or drinking our ginger beer. This craft bar world, we're a community. We welcome with open arm. Let me express this here. Give this a rub, just a little cut there. And then we can sit that on the edge of our glass. I like the lemon twist better on a scotch drink. I have to prefer a Rob Roy, that scotch with the vermouth and the lemon oils, even more than a Manhattan. The rusty nail. The recipe for this is pretty straightforward. It sort of falls into the realm of an old fashioned. An old fashioned is spirit, bitters, sugar, and water. And in this case, our jambouille becomes our sugar and our bitter together. We're gonna build it in our mixing glass. And we're literally only using a quarter ounce of our jambouille and two ounces of Macallan. Great with a lemon twist, but not totally necessary. A rusty nail, while may not have the best name Arguably, it's not a great name at all, but the drink is actually pretty good. Irish whiskey, the oldest category of whiskey. It was being made by Irish monks first, and then it moved to Scotland. Bushmills is the oldest whiskey distillery still operating in the world. A distillery that first got its license to operate back in 1608. They are still making great whiskey, and this is one of the whiskeys that we will be working with today. Irish whiskey is a blend of barley and corn, a little bit heavier on the barley side of that. These are the ones that I highly recommend. They're affordable and they make excellent cocktails. They also taste quite good on their own. Irish coffee, you got the coffee, you've got the booze, you've got the flavor. I'm gonna make this one in the glass. I am using uh, a Demerara sugar syrup. This is made in the same way as the simple syrups I've used already, which is one-to-one -one sugar to water. Those notes, those sort of brown sugar notes, are gonna be great with the coffee and the cream in this drink. We're going to use three-quarter ounce, we're going to use four ounces of coffee. I recommend a good cold brew, two ounces of our Irish whiskey. We're gonna give that a nice stir. And our goal here, there's no ice. The idea is not dilution, it's not cooling, it's really just blending and getting everything together. So this is an ISI. It's like basically making a cream on the fly. Give it a nice little stir if you want. Let's get some of that cream in there. That's my milk in the coffee idea. I don't even need the straw anymore. It's getting everything I want. You know, I'm thinking at the end of the night or towards the end of the night, but I'm not ready to go home yet. We have our coffee with our alcohol and we're ready to go and to keep going and to last throughout the evening. So cheers to that idea. Tipperary, it's in the vein of a Manhattan Rob Roy. We're introducing a new ingredient that is pretty cool and pretty unique and that is chartreuse. No one knows exactly all the ingredients that are in chartreuse, in green chartreuse in particular, except that there are some chartreusean monks who are the guardians of this secret. We are going to start with one ounce of our sweet vermouth and we'll add about a half ounce of chartreuse. Chartreuse is literally in a class of its own. It's not absinthe. You don't have that overarching sort of anise flavor. It's not Benedictine, although you can tell that there's a lot of great herbs. It is higher proof. It's over 50%. Last but not least, an ounce and a half of our Irish whiskey. And then two dashes of Angostura bitters. We're gonna add a little bit of cracked ice to make sure we get the right amount of cooling and dilution. Glass is nice and cold. Such a nice medley. The vermouth, the chartreuse, and then of course the Irish work really well together in this drink. Cheers. So here we are at the end. We have went through several great whiskey cocktails. You have a great foundation to be able to create your own great drinks. You have what you need. 
enjoy. And if you go into a great bar, make sure you tip the bartender. <laughs>